Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing polar equations. Specifically, we're going to be converting from rectangular to polar and from polar to rectangular. When you're converting these equations, you need to keep in mind four things. You need to remember that x equals r cosine theta, y is equal to r times sine theta, that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and the tan of theta equals y over x. We can use any of those four to help us convert the equations. Let's start off with x squared plus y squared equals 4. We know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so we're going to use that substitution. Then we're going to isolate r by taking the square root. Now we're not going to include the negative 2 because it doesn't really make sense for a radius length to equal negative 2. So we're just going to use the positive square root. Now you should recognize this equation x squared plus y squared equals 4 as a circle centered at the origin with a radius length of 2. When you're looking at it in its polar form, it just means that you want a circle um, or all the points that are two units away from the pole, which is going to end up being a circle centered at the pole with a radius length of 2. So you get the exact same um, drawing that you would for the rectangular form, it's just that you're doing it on a polar graph in terms of angles and radius lengths. Okay, let's try this one. Suppose you had x equals the square root of 3 times y. The first thing I'm going to do is isolate y so I can see what my slope is. And I have an equation that has a slope of 1 over the square root of 3 and a y-intercept at 0. So we can graph that on our rectangular grid pretty easily, just starting at 0 and using our slope. Now let's try to convert it to polar form. We do have a polar equation that involves um, y and x, so let's try to turn this into y over x, and then replace y over x with the tan of theta. Now I also um, rationalize the 1 over the square root of 3. Now we want to isolate theta. Remember, we want to turn everything into terms of theta or r, or both. Um, but get rid of the x's and y's in any way that you can when you're converting. Okay, so now we want to turn this into theta, so we're going to take the arctan of the square root of 3 over 3, and we get that theta equals pi over 6. Well, all that means on your polar grid is that you want all the points on the line pi over 6. So you end up with the exact same line that we had on the rectangular grid. Okay. Now we want to work the other way. We're going to convert an equation that's given to us in polar form to rectangular form. We're still going to use the same four relationships we've been using. So the first thing I'm going to do with this one is convert the cosecant to the sine. It is the reciprocal of the sine, so you end up with 3 over sine theta. Then I have a relationship that involves r sine theta, so I'm going to bring the sine of theta over to the other side. And I get r sine theta equals 3. Then by substitution, I'm going to replace r sine theta with y. So I get the equation y equals 3 in rectangular form. Now, in rectangular form, that's really easy for you to graph. It's just a horizontal line going through 3. It's not so easy to identify that in its polar form as 3 cosecant theta. But let's go ahead and plug some points into our polar form to see how they fit on the line y equals 3. So let's plug in some of these values for theta. If theta is equal to 0, the sine of 0 is 0, so 3 divided by 0 is going to be undefined. Let's try pi over 6. We know that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so that's going to give us a 6. Let's take a look at that on our grid. We already know that our line is going to be y equals 3, so we've drawn that line. And we also have the point 6 comma pi over 6. Remember when you're giving polar um, coordinates, you need to give it in terms of the radius, comma, theta. So we have 6 and pi over 6. That just means that you're on the pi over 6 line and you're 6 units away from the pole. So it's on the 6 circle coming out. So you have that point D there. So you can kind of see the relationship that it's sitting right on that line y equals 3. Let's try a few more points. Let's plug in pi over 4. We know that the sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So we're just going to um, multiply by the reciprocal and simplify. And I get 3 squared, so 2. 
at pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we end up with 3. At 3 pi over 4, we get um, the sine is 2, um, or 2 squared to 2 over 2, so we're going to end up with 3 squared to 2. At 2 pi over 3, the sine is square root of 3 over 2, so it's 3 times 2 over the square root of 3. And then we're just going to simplify and rationalize. And we get 2 square root of 3. Alright, so let's go ahead and put all those points on our grid and see where they land. So um, I plotted all the points on the line y equals 3, and you can see that they are right on that line pi over 3, uh, y equals 3. So um, you get all the points, um, they're just different radius lengths away from this pole um, for each angle that you have there so that they end up being right on that line y equals 3. Okay, let's try this one. We have r equals 4 times the cosine of theta. The first thing that we're going to do is multiply both sides by r. Be very careful when you look at this because it often looks like you're trying to square it, but you're not. You're just multiplying by r. You're not squaring both sides. So you have r squared equals 4 times r cosine theta. Well, we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And we also know that r cosine theta is equal to x. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 4x. And we want to be able to graph this. It's not easy to graph in terms of r equals 4 cosine theta. And it's still not easy to graph as x squared plus y squared equals 4x. But let's go ahead and bring our 4x over to the other side and complete the square on that. So for the x squared minus 4x, if we add 4 to it, it becomes a perfect square. Of course, I also had to add 4 to the other side. Now the, um, the trinomial x squared minus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square. So we're going to factor it. So we get x minus 2l squared plus y squared equals 4. Now you should be able to recognize that as a circle with a center at 2, 0 and a radius length of 2. That would be easy for us to graph. But let's go ahead and plug some points into our polar form. So if we plug in a 0, 4 times the cosine is 0, we would get 4 cosine of 0 is 1. Then we have 4 times the cosine of pi over 6. Just plugging that in, we end up with 2 square roots of 3. 4 times the cosine of pi over 4, that would be 4 times square root of 2 over 2, which simplifies to 2 square roots of 2. At pi over 2, we get 0, since the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. At 3 pi over 4, we get 4 times negative square root of 2 over 2, so that simplifies to negative 2 square roots of 2. And then at 2 pi over 3, we end up with 4 times negative 1 half, or negative 2. So we have all these points, and we want to see how they fit on the polar grid and compare it to what we expected, which was a circle of radius 2 centered at 2, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and put all those points on our polar grid. And I ended up with this. So we have 4, 0. Remember, we're giving it in terms of radius, and then angle measure when we're giving our coordinates. And then we have 2 square roots of 3 and pi over 6 and so on. And you can see that they're all on this circle that is centered at 2, 0 and has a radius of 2. So sometimes um, it's easier to graph them in terms of um, rectangular form because we're more familiar with what the graphs look like. Um, but it also helps to plot some points and see those relationships. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.